everybody. Welcome to our press conference to officially announce the North Carolina Football Club's option to elevate the men's program North Carolina FC to the USL Championship beginning in 2024. We have with us via Zoom owner and majority chairman Steve Mather. We also have Ed NCFC coach John Bradford and club president Frankie Gonsigan. Since Steve is joining us via Zoom, we'll ask him to begin with an opening statement, Steve, about the excitement, why now, and what this means to the club. Great. Thank you, Jay. Uh, well, we certainly are excited uh, to be able to uh, step up in the USL championship where we have a history and compete at a higher level. Uh, we're thrilled about that. We're in first place right now to continue to grow their career, and we want to give them that opportunity. I think our community is a championship quality uh, market, and uh, we are looking forward to to uh, playing next year at a higher level. And uh, I'll say that, you know, to, to your point, Jake, why now? Well, uh, coming out of the pandemic, uh, we have worked really hard to put together a front office and a technical side that can be competitive. And we feel like we've got that in place now. And uh, we're excited about moving forward uh, next year with those plans. So, uh, with that, I'll let you take it back and moderate the, the session, but I'll be available for questions uh, in a moment. Sure, before we get to questions for the panel, Club President Francie got to get Francie, could you speak a bit more on the timing of the decision and, and what this decision means from a business standpoint and from a office standpoint? Absolutely, thank you, Jake. Um, like Steve said, we're so excited. Um, this is a great opportunity both for the club and for our community. As Steve said, we've spent the past couple of years coming out of the pandemic really focused on rebuilding the infrastructure from the club. Um, and um, we are at a point where we have a great framework in place to support a championship club in addition to continuing to support the courage. And we can plan to continue to build on that framework to make sure that we continually improve the experience, both for our fans as well as for our players. Um, you know, we we are we live in a soccer hotbed. The Triangle has a long history of soccer, both at the collegiate level, um, the many youth organizations that are here, including NCFC Youth, which is the largest in the country with over 15,000 participants, as well as the pro clubs here, which have a long history as well. And we have a very soccer savvy market, I would say as well. So we're really excited to be able to go to rejoin USL Championship because we know that this is what our community wants and it's what they're going to embrace. Then, John, if you could speak to the technical side of things, which means the team obviously at first played the USL League One, knowing the team on the field is already a very quality product, and kind of what the immediate future looks like for the team on the field moving up to the USL championship. Yeah, thanks, Jack. I think it's an exciting announcement, and obviously our players, who I shared this with this morning uh, ahead of the, the announcement going public, were, were excited about it. Um, so I think it just it, it brings, you know, the, those guys that want to continue their careers at higher levels, that opportunity um, to basically audition for for that 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 chance next year to be going up to championship. Um, but we certainly don't want to lose sight of where we are right now, you know, in, in terms of League One and, and finishing off this season extremely well. And, and obviously, the guys have done a great job. So we're excited to continue that, too. We have some folks on Zoom and also several folks in the room. So let the media members in the room go first. If you don't mind, please raise your hands. I'll call on you. Please address the person with whom you have your question. And you can ask multiple of you like me with me in. Yeah, this is for uh, Francie and Steve as well. Kind of the last few weeks in this year, the whole thing, a lot of good news for the club. You've had you know, the additional investment amounts for the courage of the last few weeks. Both teams are in first place. The USLW, you know, wins the final this year. What does kind of all of that say about where the club is right now as a whole? Yeah, we're, we're in growth mode. It's a really exciting time for the club. As you said, we've got, a, we've had a lot of great announcements and a great, great, um, performances on the field by all of our clubs and it's an exciting time for us and we plan to continue to build upon that um, and there's a lot of momentum you know not just with the club but with soccer in general and um, we plan to continue to ride that ride that wave we've got world cup um, coming to north america in 2026 so again it's a great time for us to be elevating back up to the championship league and steve did you want to feel that one Sure, you, you had a great list of uh, things that have gone well for us recently, but I would I would add international exhibitions. And, you know, part of uh, going up to championship is being part of the global transfer market. Uh, we've signed a lot of young players that have stepped in and done a great job. Uh, and I had a recent signing of uh, co-captain of the U16 national team, and uh, that's a that's a statement signing for us. 
These players are coming here because we're uh, an organization that provides them with the opportunity, if you're one of the best players in the country, to move on to Europe and to play at uh, the highest levels in a global market. So we have uh, some big games coming up still, um, but uh, that gives you a a glimpse into where we're heading with this. You'll you'll see us uh, talk more about the international market and the Triangle's place uh, in that. We're excited to be offering these kids an opportunity to grow. But, um, John, for you, what is kind of the key to keeping the focus on youth development at the next level as well. So you guys have signed so many players to academy contracts and from the academy to professional world. What's kind of the key to keeping that focus on youth development as you play at this next level? Yeah, I mean, I think we've learned a ton over the last two years, to be fair, in, in 2021 and 2022 and, and through this year too. So we, we're definitely aiming to continue to support our, our academy and give opportunities for those players to come into training and uh, potentially earn match minutes and that. Um, but like Steve said, we, we want to become a, a place where it's a destination for young players to, to know that they can come here, um, be supported, you know, in a, in a positive, safe environment to develop. Uh, and they may have ambitions to move on to Europe or to another professional league. And so I think knowing our place for youth players is extremely important, you know, as a developer versus a in destination, you know, so that's going to be continued focus for us. Uh, you talked about rebuilding the infrastructure of the club to have a championship caliber club. What what does that mean? What has entailed? What's been entailed in that, in that rebuilding? It's really um, taking a step back and looking at the team that we had in place, um, you know, a couple years ago, um, and what that infrastructure looked like. What is the right organizational structure that we need to be able to succeed at the championship level and at the NWSL level with the courage? Um, and it's really, you know, what are other teams doing is one of the ways that we looked at it. And what, what are our needs in this market? Every market is a bit different. And so we did a, an assessment of that um, toward the early part to mid part of last year. And um, like I said earlier, we've rebuilt the, stru- the organizational structure over the past six to nine months, really, to be able to support the needs of the organization overall. And Johnny, kind of touched about, you know, almost the audition for next season with some of these guys. I mean, how do you balance kind of looking forward to next year and moving up, but also finishing this year out strong? Yeah, I think that's critical. You know, I mean, obviously the guys have done extremely well so far this year. We have a terrific group of guys in the locker room, um, but they're all professionals. And I think they understand that, that they have aspirations, they have ambitions to try to move up in leagues individually themselves. Uh, and what better way to do that than to perform together as a group this year, finish off the season extremely well, uh, game by game, and then ultimately have those decisions as time goes on. But I think they've got the right focus. Um, for John, what I'm assuming you told the players about this, what has the reception been from them so far? Yeah, I think extremely positive. You know, we get we do a lot of getting feedback from our players, whether it's about the, the training environment and the, the technical environment or the, the organization as a whole. Um, and such positive responses, you know, from them. And I think this this shows them the ambition of the club and the support the club wants to have for for players and for development and all that. So the training session was was a little bit better today right after the news was shared. And it's, I think it's going to continue to be that way. And then for Steve, with the move up to um, USL Championship and then all of the international, you know, all the tournaments that are coming through, does this put the stadium for downtown South back on in the frame? Well, we need facility upgrades, that is for sure. Uh, You know, just to speak to the NWSL for a minute, when we entered the league, we probably had the third or fourth best stadium, and uh, we don't anymore. And uh, with the explosion of of women's soccer, our our needs to be competitive go beyond what we currently have. And and we're continuing to have those conversations. You don't get that done without a strong public-private partnership and without really focusing on the economic benefits that you can bring through those investments. Um, and uh, and at the same time, uh, we certainly need them for the men as well. There's an opportunity in our market. You saw it when TST came in and uh, we got global exposure for uh, our market in Cary. And uh, those kinds of opportunities, Chelsea, Sunderland, uh, whether it's uh, the Riados who we have coming in in a few weeks, uh, some of the other international competitions, uh, there's certainly uh, a need for us to do better in that regard. And at the same time, we're thrilled with Fenton. If you haven't been to Fenton and had a, a nice meal or, or a drink before or after the game, you ought to do that. Uh, the you know development is fabulous. There's 13 bars and restaurants, and it's right beside our stadium. So it's had a huge impact on changing the game day, 
And uh, just like everyone else who lives in this region is experiencing, we're growing. So uh, I think that, you know, our Wake Med is a lot better place than it, it was if you haven't been out there in the last 18 months. And uh, we welcome you back as we grow into the championship and uh, go have a, a beer before the game at, at film and or after the game. Enjoy yourselves with your family. Um, you know, this region has a lot to offer in terms of entertainment. But, yeah, we need to do better. Lewis, I'll be all right. Uh, for, for both Francie and John, um, what's the next step? What, what do you do from here now that this transition is done? Keep on taking it. Uh, there, there's a lot that needs to happen. Um, certainly, um, we're we're looking at a number of considerations to to really elevate the experience from a fan perspective. John could speak from a player perspective, but um, but we're really looking at a number of different things that um, we're starting to map out, and we'll be soon uh, sharing information on and starting to implement as well. Yeah, and I think from the soccer side, you know, as we are. Um, again, trying to balance, you know, this year, and next year. But as we look towards next year, it's it's a matter of understanding what our our roster needs are going to be, what our budget's going to look like. Um, you know, the the ability to attract players uh, to North Carolina FC only gets elevated by being in USL Championship. Um, just getting off the training field and checking my phone, I've got a ton of uh, former players that are in the championship now, just saying congratulations and. Um, I could see, you know, some of those conversations taking place, that kind of thing. But for right now, you know, it's it's duly focused, one, on the season at hand and what we're doing, and then starting to just learn information on how we're going to structure things going into next year. And just to add to that and kind of piggybacking off of what John said, we're not taking our foot off the pedal when it comes to the rest of this season. We've got six more home games remaining, and we want to get as many fans out to those games. So we're certainly very focused on that as well, in addition to planning ahead for next year. Yeah, I'm transient. I don't think a move like this would be possible without results coming on the field as well. Just can you talk a little bit about the job John has done with this team and this roster the last few seasons? Absolutely. I mean, I think the results speak for themselves. We're at the top of the table. John's done an incredible job of leading leading the team and leading the coaching staff. Um, and, and it really does make an impact. The, more, the better the performance on the team, the better the opportunity is to get fans out to the stadium and provide them with a great experience. So he's done an incredible job of really getting the team to the point where, where, they, where we need it to in order for us to, to get the fans out to the stadium. Sure. Kind of piggybacking off of that, John, you talked about the players' reaction, but it's also a promotion for you as well. I mean, kind of what does it mean to you to, to be able to now coach champions for the team? No, I'm excited about it, you know, and, and again, go back to the balance of, of now and the future. Um, but, you know, it's 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 very rewarding in a sense to, to have been at the club for so many years like I have. Um, this was, the, was this, I guess, one of the few jobs that I hadn't held yet um, between the youth and the pros. So it was time to fill that. But uh, I had a great experience, you know, coming in when, with, with Dave Sarikin before in USL Championship in years past as an assistant coach. I learned about the league then and, you know, excited to get back to it next year. Is there an opponent you're most looking forward to facing for championship next year? Is there, is there one game you've got circled? Nope. I've got, I've got Richmond circled right now, you know, for, for Wednesday of this week, and then we'll circle the next one, and then we'll get to our regular season, and then we'll look towards next year.